Hey, my name is TJ and I'm here to talk about this amazing topic on our LinkedIn Live, Navigating 2024 Blueprint for Customer Service Automation. With AI and automation expected to manage over 70% of customer interactions by 2024, which is up from 15% in 2021, the stakes are really high. The shift represents not just a trend, but a fundamental change in how businesses interact with their customers emphasizing speed, personalization, and efficiency. Just to validate it further, Gartner predicts that by 2024, which is this year, organizations using generative AI will produce 30% more effective customer engagement than those who don't, significantly enhancing customer satisfaction. Last but not the least, businesses that integrate full stack customer service automation, and we'll learn more in this, in this discussion today, are projected to see 60% reduction further in operational costs alongside a marked improvement in response times, self-service, and customer satisfaction ratings. Well, in this dynamic landscape, staying ahead means embracing innovative technologies that can transform customer service from reactive to predictive to autonomous. To discuss it further, today we have two esteemed guests joining us to help us further build a blueprint for customer service automation success. Jessica Osborne, a senior manager, IT service operations at Transtat, one of our most valued customers. And she will share how they're advancing customer service automation in their organization. And Rashid Khan, our CPO, the chief product officer and co-founder at Yellow.ai, is joining us to reveal how generative AI is reshaping engagement, reducing costs, setting new standards, and a product roadmap that he has built for the company which is going to be a game changer. All right. My first question, Jessica, this is for you. In terms of commercial adoption by businesses across industries, what do you think will predominantly happen? Will we see more prominent use cases in different industries coming up that will leverage AI? You can always quote how Randstad sees this today. What evolutions and enhancement you're expecting if that may be shared? Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. I, you know, 2023 was a tough year for quite a few companies. Uh, we, we as Ronstad, uh, had started our AI journey uh, in 2023, started to roll that out just a little bit. And, you know, with our focus now in place in 2024, we really want to make 2024 the year. So our focus is more so i would say more so laser focused on exactly what we can do to be a partner for our customer be a partner for our talent be able to uh help and improve the business what can we do to do that and we have found that with ai with partnering with yellow ai we're able to improve that business and i think businesses that start adding in AI into um, their working areas and things like that will find the same thing that we're finding. We started our journey in just one area of the company and now I'm having multiple areas of the company reaching out because they see the benefit, they see the automation. And with automation, it's not removing the employee that's working there, right? It's enhancing the ability for that employee to work. So it's really exciting to be able to see this industry grow, um, especially with in larger corporate companies. Um, and, you know, just really seeing where we can enhance or, or uh, make that customer experience even better. Excellent. And, and, and we have been talking, Jessica, in, in the past as well, would you be okay to touch upon some of the uh, some of the outcomes you have achieved by embracing AI last year? And thanks for calling Absolutely. out that we're expanding it in the organization. But would be would be good to hear your uh, outcomes precisely and and what really makes you feel excited about it even more? Absolutely. So our proof of concept 
for AI was our W2 season. Of course, we're a staffing agency. So with the staffing agency, our biggest season is making sure we get W2s out on a timely manner, be able to get them to the end user, our hold times because of this, all of those types of things. So we were looking for something that would enhance what we already had in place. We had a little bit of what you would call automation. It was just being able to handle something without an agent interaction. However, the W-2s would not deliver until four to 24 hours after it was requested. So when you have someone that's sitting in a tax office trying to, come, trying to file their taxes, they call in to get their W-2 and they don't get it for 24 hours, we have a problem. Then it caused a lot of multiple calls, whole times in the organization, things like that. What we did with Yellow, when we partnered with Yellow AI, we were able to change that experience for the end user. So they call in, they ask for their W-2 to be emailed to them. It is literally within 30 seconds that they get it now. So we give ourselves a little bit of a buffer and tell everybody that it's five minutes, but they get it before they even hang up the phone. So wow. that really transformed our business last year. We started a little bit after W2 season started, but we were able to, even after the first couple of days, we were at an 80, over 80% 80 containment rate through the whole W-2 season. Not to mention that we lowered it. We lowered the number of calls that came in. We lowered the whole times, all of those things. So I have some exciting news. W-2 season started <laughs> this week. <laughs> and so two days ago on 131, we turned on our bot, Randy, uh, to be able to do our W-2 season first day so we turned it on about 8 15 in the morning i ran some numbers in the afternoon about four o'clock and we were already first day already at 82 percent containment rate wow oh that's awesome i mean so well can relate to it we all are looking for our w2s at the moment what a season what a timely discussion to have for sure jessica it's brilliant absolutely it's so exciting you know that was our proof of concept that was where we wanted to start and we were able to prove that um, and be able to make an impact so because of that we're able to continue our journey with yellow ai and our partnership with yellow ai we were um we have offered now uh pay information over our bot we are launching today our soft launch this is this is secret information we're launching today our soft launch of our conversational ivr so wow. that will change and go live this afternoon for a couple hours and then permanently next week. So you'll be able to call in and talk instead of using the keypads. So super excited about that. And then, you know, more en enhancements, different things that we're allowed to are able to give to the caller. Um, we're going to be enhancing it on the internal side for job aids and um, knowledge articles and all that kind of stuff. So really, I I have a roadmap that just continues to grow. <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting to hear and such high impact of, you know, not only embracing AI, but literally just going and literally innovating um, for the businesses and for your customers to have that experience, you know, and it's such a such a great thing you mentioned because if you broadly see and look into the investments in customer service technologies to what you just said, you know, how you're expanding, it's actually anticipated to grow by 40%, which looks like, and especially for this year, as businesses strive to meet and exceed the evolving uh, customer expectations. So this is just phenomenal, Jessica. Thank you so much for sharing these insights here. Absolutely. Um, cool. Uh, well, over to you, Rashid. Uh, thanks so much for your leadership uh, in shaping uh, the product uh, roadmap for for Yellow, and uh, you know as as we would love to know, and certainly we coined the term uh, full stack customer service automation platform. Would you be okay to elaborate a little bit more on your vision to build um, the full stack and unified customer service uh, automation platform, Rashid? And how is this going to reshape the customer service industry in 2024? What are the business benefits precisely? It, thanks, TJ. Uh, you know, very excited to uh, be on this show, and thanks, Jessica, for the amazing insights which you have provided about uh, using Yellow and seeing uh, massive benefits. Uh, so, TJ, to uh, largely 
uh, answer your question about you know, what's in for 2024 and how we're thinking about autonomous support, uh, let me just take a step back and uh, talk about from our first principles in terms of you know why why do this now, right? I think that's one of the things we should try to answer. And then uh, what is really changing uh, you know, for businesses this year? So I'll just try to cover those two aspects. Uh, the first one is I think we're trying to go back to our roots of uh, uh, providing a fully autonomous customer support. It's the vision which we started the company uh, you know, eight years back. And uh, our mission has not, um, our mission has become much much more important today. Uh, when we think about, you know, we want to automate uh, customer support. So, you know, humans, uh, you know, who are answering calls, who are responding to emails, uh, you know, responding to chats are freed up uh, to build more memorable relationships, right? So they step up from the job which uh, they're doing. And, uh, in the last 12 to 18, landscape has this massively transformed with generative AI. So when you look at the past of you know how customer engagement centers would build, uh, they were largely built on the four pillars. Uh, as we talk about the first pillar of you know having an official system of record, uh, second pillar of case management, uh, the third pillar of workflow ma management, and the fourth pillar of knowledge management, and. Uh, in most cases, the organizations to be able to leverage uh, you know, this as a platform, they would need to use multiple tools at their end. Uh, so they would have like a support CRM, they would have like a uh, agent management system, they would have a workflow management system or an automation system, and they would have like a knowledge management system. Uh, keep in mind, uh, all of the systems were designed for an era where 70 to 80 percent of tickets, uh, be it uh, chats, be it calls, be it emails were handled by humans. And there was maybe 5 to 10% of automation. Uh, so they're built very heavily towards human-centric uh, resolution. Uh, but in the last you know, you know, 12 to 15 months of development, what we are seeing is you know, customers like Jessica are able to get to 80% containment uh, with the AI. So that means that the tools is, uh, and the tool set for that will be very different. Right? Now, the future is uh, you know, the way we predict uh, and are very bullish on is 70 to 80 percent of support, um, you know, being in terms of calls, in terms of emails, in terms of chats, would be handled by uh, AI. And just the uh, you know, bottom 15, bottom 20 percent of the cases which actually requ require human intervention, those would be handled by human workflows. Now, when when that has to happen, I think one of the one of the big things which we'll start seeing is convergence of the four pillars as I talked about. Into, into a single platform. And uh, to answer your question on the roadmap, I think that's where we are sort of headed uh, to uh, solve uh, that problem out, uh, DJ. That's really, really exciting to hear, Rashi. Then certainly, I mean, as we evolve more uh, and we take some of our products to market, you know, I can't be more excited um, because uh, we also kind of went went uh, live with a private beta of our um, uh, another offering for this year, which is called Voice Hub, uh, which will have its own voice inbox powered by generative AI. And there's so much of goodness to kind of take back from. And we'll certainly have a long list of things you're going to be doing. So I'm also equally excited, Rashid, with you to kind of take these to the market. Uh, but thank you so much for uh, laying out the vision for the product roadmap and clarifying the reasoning behind it to put it together the way it is. Well, I think my biggest question now comes down to the the fact that we're talking about you know a future which certainly is full of automation. Uh, Jessica, you are seeing almost eighty two percent containment. Uh, we are definitely with self serve. Sometimes are heading beyond ninety percent self serve and automation. Now, certainly with the evolution of generative AI, all of these conversations and certainly the the adoption has gone gone more human. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we're having a lot more human-like, goal-based, uh, sort of intent-based conversations, which is giving a lot of lot of results, which are more aligned to the human uh, requirements. Now, the question to both of you, and would love to know both of your thoughts, like what strategic sh steps should enterprises truly take today to seamlessly integrate like broader adoption of AI, but also generative AI into their operations this year? And could you sort of, outline, you know, what will it take for every business to kind of, you know, get into the journey if they haven't yet? And the ones who have, um, 
what are the industries you, you would see will get the maximum impact from adoption of AI and generative AI in 2024? Anyone of you can start. So just a few questions. <laughs> so just to talk a little bit about it, a couple of things that I think are always a top of concern when looking at a new product or something like that. When you're talking about should a company move forward with this type of automation? I think a couple of the things, especially that we went through, was making sure the security and the security side of business and making sure that Yellow AI had a secure platform, that it was an we were able to use that and not have any legal or, um, legal issues, anything like that. We were able to go ahead and use that and feel secure within the environment. And it went through a lot of security uh, interviews and things like that. And we, uh, Yellow was able to pass that. For one, is it secure? Yes. Is there security in place for different areas within the platform? Yes. Uh, you know, another thing is how do you get the buy-in? How do you make sure that you're able to get people, executives, uh, willing to spend the money, right? Like, how mm -hmm. do you, how do you, and how do you start that conversation? So I think what you have to do is something similar, like what we had to do. We had to choose something that was maybe what you consider a low hanging fruit, but it was so impactful. You know, the W2 season, it was a pretty straightforward request. But it was so, the volume is so much, you know, with putting millions of people to work each year, we have to be mm. able to offer their W-2 to them. So I think that's a big thing where you can start your POC with just something that's, that's straightforward. Don't, don't mm. try and boil the ocean your first mm. go out, um, you know, and I think as you add to it, like I said, we're adding to it. We have a large roadmap. Um, you know, we're adding to it as we go. So I think that's a couple of things. I think the other thing that we're still trying to overcome as an industry is just the understanding that AI doesn't take away the need for human touch. So mm. some things still do need human touch. Some things still do need in, uh, human interaction. So in putting in AI with part partnering with yellow AI, it didn't mean that we were just going to downsize and we were going to remove a whole a lot of roles. It meant that we were going to structure it a little differently. So I think those are a couple of things within the industry that are concerns. I think 2024 is a great opportunity. I think there are lots of different ways that we could go with this. And I do think what industry is saying, I think that there's going to be a large influx in the use of AI because people are really, you know, I mean, it's taken a while. It's taken what, probably 10 years to get us to where we are now. <laughs> but even in from 2022 to 2024, we took a large leap. I think we're just going to continue those large leaps every year. Wow. Oh, that's brilliant. And such nicely uh, articulated the, the data security part. It's just becoming so critical. And with the evolution of Generative AI even more, right? You know how exactly you know this is going to be trained and eventually used um, from a data perspective. So really, thank you for validating that. How how Yellow is helping there uh, for sure, Jessica, and also your thought process around uh, the adoption in general for AI and Gen AI precisely uh, as we go forward. Rashid, your thoughts on the on the same lines um, in terms of the questions that I just asked. Uh, happy to hear your thoughts too. Yeah, I think the first one in terms of uh, AI adoption. So for companies which uh, haven't gotten on the bandwagon and have haven't started their AI transformation, I think one of the first places to begin is to start thinking about what sort of use cases will bring the most impact. You know, as, as Jessica talked about, you know, for them solving the W two problem uh, was one of the biggest impactful areas, and in most cases, uh, you know, my suggestion. Uh, and you know, as Yellow, uh, we recommend our customers to start off with probably one or two use cases, uh, which, as we call them, you know, low-hanging fruits to be solved. To start with that and start seeing success uh, with AI. Uh, what you don't necessarily want is to create like a panic situation uh, with an organization uh, with a bad outcome, or not you know, or not seeing enough value by adopting AI. So you know, that's my number one recommendation as enterprises. 
sort of start thinking about the transformation. And the second is, uh, you know, for the companies which have already started and have a couple of use cases, uh, you know, running in production and are seeing uh, value out of, uh, you know, using AI systems, uh, it's always good to be very iterative, right? One of the things which we love about uh, Jessica and the team is uh, they're super iterative about the way they're adding new use cases uh, and solving for newer things. Uh, and one of the best places to hear is from the end consumers are using your system and see you know what more problems can you solve for them. Uh, mm. And as a platform, we enable that very seamlessly. We you know, provide a lot of insights in terms of what is the next thing to be automated. Uh, so you, it takes away all the guesswork uh, and make sure that you're always always focusing on the uh, on the right uh, uh, sort of use cases. Uh, you know, as you go along. So I think that's that would be my two cents on uh, you know how companies should think about uh, adopting a technology, and uh, and second thing, uh, Jessica's thought process on uh, the whole responsible AI. I think you know we have been very vocal about uh, you know companies need to handle the data um, in in a in a Right. much stricter fashion. Uh, they need to really care about, about removing biases from uh, the AI algorithms itself and, and how most of these systems work. And also from a security perspective, because now you're enabling a lot of data collection. Uh, so I think, you know, as, as, as a company, as uh, as a founder, I'm, you know, we're super focused on making sure, you know, we focus on the whole responsible AI uh, and helping, you know, organizations to, you know, become more responsible with that data. Uh, so very happy to hear that Jessica from you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's what we're hearing too from the broader industry. And I think I love the fact that you both touched upon use cases because it's not a spray and pray. Let's, you know, put Gen AI or a artificial intelligence for everything that's happening in the company, but the journey. And I'm so uh, excited about, you know, Jessica, the journey Rance had, has also had here like starting where exactly you picked up the use case and now you're expanding. I think that's exactly the way enterprises should be adopting AI and seeing the value. Um, and Rashid, to your point, you know, responsible AI. So true in the way we are building the platform. So, well, um, thanks both of you. Been phenomenal in terms of having you both here and for this discussion, uh, Jessica, Rashid, and uh, to our viewers, thanks for listening to us. Just want to conclude um, that with enterprises with AI, uh, adoption and already into their uh, ecosystem and platforms uh, and along with generative AI in, in today's day and time, certainly going to be far ahead of their competition. And this will be a significant drive for them to maximize their ROI. But and just to kind of call out what we are doing here and why it's important, we at Yellow are helping enterprises you know, build this fully autonomous customer experience with more than 90% of queries self-served, um, reducing operational costs by almost 60% consistently and leading to overall higher efficiency. Well, instead of waiting for customers to ask for help, we proactively serve them even before an issue occurs and ensure a smooth and positive customer experience at every touch point. And not to, not to boast about it or do a sales pitch, but it's very important to understand that why we are talking about AI and generative AI, because we have developed and deployed more than 120 generative AI production bots today, which is closely 30% of the global generative AI bots deployed in elsewhere in the world. And this is to ensure that our customers gets the maximum value and get the best out of their investments. Our goal with this session was to provide a roadmap. I hope you, you got the roadmap from both Jessica and Rashid with the thought process. And what we really want to do is to kind of go ahead and give you an ebook uh, sort of a guide which we have put together beyond these conversations where we have uh, put together all of the real world success stories, step-by-step -step guide uh, so that you can make an informed decision, some of the exclusive tools and some templates. So go ahead, look into that, but also let us know how you felt about the session. I'm super pumped about what's ahead in 2024 for every enterprise who are going to be automating their processes and, and their operations and can't be more excited to see what the end of the year would look like. And we will be here next year talking about the footprint from 2025 precisely. This is TJ. Thank you for listening to us.